Natalie was a beautiful soul, the epitome of generosity. Natalie was that teacher who was vibrant, she was involved in everything, every aspect of school. She was involved in sports day, the feeding program, the talk shop, um, everything. Natalie was a very selfless person. She has never said no to anybody. If she cannot do it, she will get somebody to do it for you. Or she'll source whatever you need. And you ask her something and she'll say, let me think about it. And by the next day or the evening, she'll come back and say, guess what? This can be done or that can be done. So she's always going beyond to help. As a staff, we are not doing so well, but we are counting on the strength of Almighty God to take us through. Our parents are devastated because Natalie would have touched everybody's lives. Our students, they are grieving. And um, I was in a session just this week with our students where the Ministry of Education engaged them in a grief counseling. Mm -hmm. And when I sat into that session, my heart was broken all over again. Mm -hmm. When I listened to how my students described Miss Dawkins. Mm -hmm. The circumstances that have brought me here today are very sad, tragic circumstances. We are all badly impacted by our understanding of what took place with Natalie Dawkins. I know that the staff of the school must have been shattered by this news. My understanding is that Natalie was a quiet and, and much loved member of staff. She was a dedicated teacher, currently teaching grade three, but having taught other grades in the past. And I can only wonder how in this time of COVID and the pandemic, when online learning is the order of the day, how the, the students will be impacted by this and how they grieve without being able to come in and have that face-to-face -face contact. It's, it must be so difficult for everybody involved. And of course, the family, uh, Natalie's family, who we will be visiting shortly. The good news is that the police have done a good job in that they have apprehended, arrested, and charged two of the culprits, and we hear through the media that they have actually confessed to their crime. And we understand that there's one other who was actually killed in a shootout. So at least that brings some form of almost closure in the sense that somebody or persons will be held accountable for this. But it's such a despicable and depraved act. One wonders what is wrong with our young men who get into this kind of thing. You know, what would induce them to take it to the extent that they did? It is really shocking and horrible and offends the conscience of the nation. But we must move on. We cannot lose hope. We must help each other to get through these tragic incidents and continue in our commitment to build a better Jamaica. I remember one student said she was such a sweet soul. She would not even harm a fly. Mm. And why Miss Dawkins? You know, they are grieving. They, they, their hearts are torn. But I'm also grateful that the security forces would have captured those perpetrators, mm -hmm. those hoodlums, and um, I shared with the Denby, High, the Denby Primary family this morning mm -hmm. that it took a Natalie's death. Natalie was so kind and giving and so helpful when she was alive. Mm -hmm. And even in her death, she's helping somebody. Mm -hmm. Because I am thinking that with those persons behind bars, mm -hmm. there are some pers families who would have been mourning if the police did not capture those men. I want to thank everybody for coming out and for supporting us as a school family. And we will get through this.